When you see the big B, you know, in <laughs> Brews Beers in Midtown with Dave Olson catching up. What's you know, up? when the sun comes out. It's a beautiful day in Colorado. Most people grab a stick of juicy fruit. No, we go to Brews <laughs> Beers because you know what? Look at this. Patio it's beer. The What's the address here? We are at, oh, you're, you're really testing me out here. 67th Six, and Pecos. 67th and Pecos. <laughs> look around. Sweet 100. Look for the. <laughs> look, look for Bruce Beer. You'll see it right here. That's right. But anyway, truck out front. That's a Hesher barbecue today. But yeah, just show us around before we go inside and catch up. Yeah, so this is our warm side patio. This is the sunny side. This is where we put the little uh, heat lamps and all the things to keep people warm because this side is a little warmer. We have extra patio on this side as well, but most people don't hang out there in the wintertime. I've seen so. this in full effect. Oh yeah, this gets, the it beer gets nutty out here. Yeah. There's so much stuff that goes on. That's right. And again, in Midtown Colorado, you gotta come up here dog friendly day. Yeah, 67th and Pecos, that's where we're at. All right, let's check it out. Inside of Brews Beers, it's palatial, very accommodating, and look at it. Here we are. I know. First Pretty thing, big. It's got first a lot thing of you walk in, you get that smell. Yeah, I've been I've been doing some cleaning today, so there's a lot of aromas in the air right now. I smell yeast. Yep, it's yeasty. It's a little bit of hops in there. I cleaned. We just did a uh, love it. tart saison, hoppy saison that just hit 12 ounce cans. So uh, we uh, the smells are in the air with that kind of a beer going on. I've spent a lot of time right here as we just started. This is where, yeah, this is where this is this is where everyone spends their time just before they leave the brewery for the most part, or when they first walk in. But yeah, we have a significantly expanded our package program since coronavirus hit. So we have a lot of packaged beer right now. Just because I'm shy, I start here and I yeah, go, yeah. okay, what? <laughs> and so I want to look and I go, okay, but is all of this on tap? Uh, not everything is on tap. We like Belgian Triple, we sell so much triple in this location that Belgian Triple currently is only in packaging because we sell the drafts so fast. Which one's that? The What's Belgian that? Triple's right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Just go through them real quick. You got the Puppy Dog, which I've had plenty yeah, of. Yeah, pup, Puppy Dog's a big one. That one's not on draft any longer. Don Blanche is not on draft any longer. These are all of our best sellers. They just they wow. go real fast. So in the can, that's killer. In the cans. We'll serve them in cans on site as well, uh, but uh, to go is a great way to uh, enjoy during these times. So, and I yeah. love the bottle releases too. Yeah, all our bottles are bottle conditioned. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a really um, authentic old Old world way of doing mm -hmm. beer. A lot of home brewers do it that way, but creates a really unique product. Look at that apparel wall. That's something that a lot of people and, and breweries are like football team or any athletic yeah. team yeah. where people love to say, this is my brewery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, we we focus on, on apparel. We do a really good job. We try to have a good variety of stuff, different things for different people. And um, our, our artist is really good. She does a really great job with a lot of different unique designs um so yeah and collaboration and local is always cool because one of the things i've known about bruised beers throughout the years they find really cool products and bring it in we too. do yeah we try to use local products in a lot of stuff we use a lot of local products in our beers locally grown hops locally grown grains and uh, we use a lot of local um, partnerships with uh, breweries and food as well yeah is this kind of a display of what you got or the to-go program? Yeah, this is our to-go program. So people, some people don't see the fridge on the way in or the way out. And so we have a display here as well, um, just showing off all what we got available to go. And then we got a package, you know, like special packages that we do throughout the year as well. So. Look at the, you, you, you've got these great taps right here. This tap system is right Beautiful into the cooler. Tap wall. Yep. Yep. So, uh, What's the method? What's what's been on tap the longest? Oh, the longest. I mean, like I said, we sell more triple probably than I think most breweries in the whole country sell. But we sell a lot of triple, and we pretty much always have a triple on. If not on draft, we'll, you can get it in cans like right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, triples, quads, they're almost always on draft, almost always available in this location. That's oh. the lovely Miss Kristen here. Miss Kristen. Behind the bar. <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Good to see you. Yeah, so so we, we have one that's a CO2 line that just, but otherwise every single beer, we have one root beer line uh, for the kids because we're in a family-friendly neighborhood. No more so. kombucha? And we have one that has kombucha. 
All yeah, right. so every other line, it's 20 lines, but every other line is beer, and it's they're almost always full. We, we have a couple of empty lines right now because we're getting set up for a, a release this Thursday, our Grisette series. It's three different beers. Um, it's, a, it's a very long, it's actually the first beer that I ever made and uh, formulated four brews when I started. It's yeah. a Grisette, really light, Saison style beer. We got two fruits, a raspberry and strawberry coming, and then a dry hopped version. All in bottles, bottle conditioned, and it will be on draft as well. That's this Thursday. So. I'm sure the viewers are going like, okay, you're in the brew. Why don't you guys have a beer? Yeah, you're what, right. We what, should get a beer. Yeah. What, what you, you drinking? You, you, it's dealer's choice. Okay, dealer's choice. Is the raspberry dealer's on choice. Right Here now? he goes. Dave Olson here with us, Brews Beer, along with Kristen. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> No stone unturned. These guys have the best of the best. And the glassware, too. A different glass per what you want to do. So you gla grab that glass. So what's going to go That's in absolutely it? right. So what I'm going to pour you is a off-menu item. It's one of the beers that we're releasing right. uh, this Thursday. This is the raspberry version of that grisette that we're releasing. Oh, no. This is the strawberry version of that grisette that we're releasing this uh, Thursday. Oh, my goodness. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over at Sam's number three, Glendale. You want a Bloody Mary? You want a cheeseburger? You want a breakfast burrito, Greek salad, bacon gyro meat, chicken souvlaki, barbecue ranch salad? We got you covered. Come down and see us. One more time. Try it again. Hey guys, Alex Armitas over here at Sam's number three, Glendale. Now get your ass to themoderneater.com. Thank you so much. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Making education cool again, Jay. You know how? Culinary Quick Start Program. We are in love. They're using Studio Kitchen Colorado Monday through Thursday. If you have any desire to get into culinary or you're just sharpening your skills, I'm telling you, these guys, Chef Blake, Chef Marcus, they're instructing a course, and I've been there the past couple of nights, and this course is cool. It's informative, it's innovative, and it has the modern eater touch on it. You can tune into this as well, but you have to sign up for the course. If you go to themoderneater.com, you'll see it on the top navigation bar. It's a drop down. Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. All of the stuff that we're doing and sign up information is right there for you. It's a gimme. It's free to you. It's like the cooking classes you pay for. Don't pay for them anymore. You just sign up and what is the best part of this thing? We got jobs for you. The troops are rallying, the community's getting together and there's a baseline. So restaurants, if you wanna get involved, you're a restaurant tour, you can get involved because we need you and you to support this program with your skills. So what does that entail? This entails getting together 
and having a job seminar for these students. It's gonna be a baseline. You need a baseline of knowledge for your students where when they come in, you know they're gonna be able to handle a line in a kitchen. So get involved. If you have any interest in signing up and being a student for this class, you can't get in on this three weeks, but the following three weeks you can get in on. Again, sign up, themoderneater.com. You'll see Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start. But we want you to join the revolution of making education cool again. Okay, back to El I'm excited about this. So this is a Thursday release? Yeah, this one's releasing Thursday in drafts and, and cans. So what, what or a bottle? Sorry. Tell us about this beer. So this is a a, uh, a very classic, very old style. Um, traditionally, it was brewed for the miners. In uh, it's it's in the saison family, but it's a much lower ABV, very light beer. Cheers. Um, traditionally, it was brewed for the miners. It's called grisette because it means gray lady. The ladies that used to serve the miners as they come out with this beer would wear gray dresses because it was a coal mine and they were messy and. They didn't want their dresses to look dirty, so they just wore gray dresses. So grisette, gray lady, is what that means. But this is a, uh, a slightly sour mixed culture, long ferment. I brewed it almost a year and a half ago now, and it's been in tank and then bottle conditioned for another month and a half or so. So kind of similar to that beer that we were working with, uh, but a lot lighter, a little less maybe complex, and a lot more drinkable, like, like strawberry lemonade, kind of. Now, Scott Brewing Company has a... Uh, what is it? Pink vapor stew is one of their sours. And okay. I really love that. Renownedly sours to me, they bring this deep down body gut, yeah. guttural. They can, yes. You, you, you know, you know when someone's drinking a sour. Yeah, for sure. So is that a sign of a, of a good sour beer or? So there, yeah, there are different types of sour beer. This one I would say is a little bit more bright and a little bit more effervescent and the fruit in there kind of oh, yeah. gives it a really drinkable, it's not overly sour yeah it's a very it's a porch pounder you know we're releasing it now just as the weather starts to warm up hoping that it's gonna inspire everyone to well, feel warm again that's what i was gonna say usually when i go down the road of the sour is i can one maybe two but this yeah. looks like something you could this really is something that we aim to make a lot more drinkable than the ever sour there you know sours are often thought of as thinker beers you know you really got to sit with it and sort of drink it and think about it and in you know but this is one that we, we try to aim for it to be a very drinkable, light touch of acidity, but a lot of complexity, a lot of nuance. I love it. And uh, yeah, that strawberry on this one, it's really light, but it gives just that enough complexity. It's right there. Effervescence to I really make it, it hit nice. Grab the so. smaller taster and give me a, a shot yeah. of something different. Okay. There. All right, this is fun. This is when you get the brewer and you got the brewer behind the bar with tasters, you don't say no, you just go, go for yeah. it. So this is a beer, this is our beer to guard beer. I think it's a very underrated beer for us, very underrated style of beer. Um, but it's one of the, it's, it's the brewer's favorite right now. And um, uh, whenever anybody comes in asking for amber or red or um, lager, if we don't have our pills on, then this is something we point them towards. Really light and crisp. But malt forward, not hop forward, no sourness, no acidity there. Just nice, malty, um, slight red color. This is 100% Colorado beer that I make with root shoot malting and um, uh, high wire hops, which I do in a lot of my beers, but it's hard to get 100% Colorado beers sometimes. Wow. This is one of those ones now, was this? that I make. That's fantastic. I remember the terrifying trip that I took with Ryan to High, wi <laughs> high Wire Hops. In, uh, that's in, in Were you driving Aonia, in a car right? with Ryan? <laughs> the, or flying in an airplane with in Ryan? A, in an airplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, Ryan. Both are fairly scary when you... When you I was going to say. Had both of, yeah, I've had both experiences. Greg, yeah, you, <laughs> did, you did both. Yeah. Um, sure. But truly, the all Colorado beer and being able to see where those hops come from and, yeah, and we, cut from the wire. Yeah, we are so lucky in the state to mm -hmm. have enough ecosystem to support both of those things and uh, and and really good quality stuff and making still excellent quality beer with locally grown ingredients is what's the name really of this amazing one? this is our beer to Mars there uh, it is called uh, the gatherer 
it's not it's not a to go. It's a tap room only beer, but it's here as well as the Colfax location. At Colfax too. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about Bruce beers and the, and the Belgium style beers is if you get Charlie Gott and Kenny into the equation with stories and 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 just history of beers and and where they come from. To take what a cool thing to take that Colorado and Colorado ingredients. Yeah. Into the Belgium style beer yeah. realm, right? Yeah. And still deal with the simple ingredients and, and what just straightforward beer. Yeah. And come up with this delicious product with a spin of Colorado and the stories yeah. of our own. Right. Yeah. Which I think is I mean, fantastic. The way I always have seen it is the Belgians use Belgian malt because they live in Belgium, uh -huh. you know, and they made what they could out of the ingredients that they had yeah. at hand. And I kind of feel inspired by that in that Belgian way in what ingredients do I have on hand and what cool things can I make with those yes. ingredients, yes. you know, as well as in the w with using Belgium as the inspiration, right? using their beers as the inspiration, but trying, you know, we use a lot of Belgian ingredients as well. And there are some beers that are special and they will s remain uh -huh. Belgian always. You know, there will be Belgian ingredients always. But we like to, you know, I like to throw it in, in the mix, all those local sure. ingredients, and really be inspired by Colorado. But and the, but the lore and those stories, yeah. they, they'd come yeah. from that. I mean, when you're talking about miners and that kind of thing. Yep. Take me on another, just the ultimate, and w what's better with beers than stories? Right? Nothing is better than beer. Nothing at all. So, so, so with that in mind, grab an, another couple of those okay. tasters and, and take me to the ultimate story. More We're going to go story. with one more story. Okay. But with the name of the beer, the whole thing. Yeah. And, and it could be the Hellraiser. Do you still have the Hellraiser? We do. I think we, we might have kicked it. We've been, oh, no, here. Yeah, we still have Hellraiser. Now, that's one of the. I am not. Uh, I don't have. That's a Charlie this story a, right this there. This is a Charlie story for sure. So, but it's a great beer, you know. Uh, do, it's another, a, it's, do a different one. It's a Golden Strong, um, a spiced Golden Strong. It's a super unique style. They're not very uh, prevalent in Belgium, but they're very interesting. Okay, and, what's and this one? Some, this is Hellraiser. This is Hellraiser. So Hellraiser. This is the Hellraiser that you said, sure. yeah. So I don't know his specific story around sure. this beer, but the but the this style of Golden Strong, it's obviously much darker than a, like a Duval is is another style of Golden Strong that's 100% Pilsner malt, which is very light beer. This has a lot more complex malts in it, uh, specialty malts in it. There's some spices in it, which is very unique in the. So it's it's more like a Belgian specialty, but it lives in that Golden Strong world. It's and got a high alcohol content. It's, it's boozy. It's super boozy, <laughs> <laughs> which is why it sells like hotcakes in yeah. this brewery because everything with booze sells like yeah. hotcakes in this but brewery. But it's still so good too. This man over here knows. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. Yeah, it's a great beer. It's super complex. There's so many, oh. so much character mm. going on in that beer. Let me get one more All right, I, so we yeah, could tell I need, a story. I need story time. Yeah, so we could tell a story. Wait, I don't know if we've talked about the carrot saison here before. Here we go. We do a saison every year. Um, so in this community, there's a, a um, there is uh, some gardens that the community can uh, sign up for and grow their own ingredients, and we sign up for Right out back here. Right out back yeah. here, yep. Right in the yard that you saw uh, going around the building on the outside. And these are damn carrots. Right? Um, and these are carrots <laughs> that we grew in that garden. They were uh, the rainbow carrots, so purple, yellow, orange, red, hey, um, look, Ma, white carrots. Ma, carrots from the yard. Yeah. And so we, we brew a saison. We, we've, historically, we've done a beet saison, but we, tried to, we started to change it up this year. And we, I think we really like the results. The purple carrots really Look gave it this nice light purple pink hue to it. Um, and then some of the red carrots as well. But the flavor is Am I going to taste carrot? You're going to taste you, you think I will? All right. Oh, it's going to be carroty. Yeah, so it's, it's all like earthy right through the middle of the palate. And you get, it's, it's rainbow carrots, so you're not going to get that traditional orange carrot character. It's going to be a little bit more complex, a little bit more diverse carrot flavor but that earthiness straight across the, the center of the tongue really brings that carrot right into the front of the palate it's, it's it, so i i don't think you can imagine what this taste like beet you can kind of imagine yeah with mm -hmm. i don't think you can quite you have to taste this you do yeah it's super unique and i think that you described it right like that earthy taste right mm -hmm. but not dirt wise because it's no no yeah right more like that carrot that natural carrot character but in a in a hey, look, it's Chef, in with Chef the Chabot beer with some tacos serving tacos <laughs> only the best. best 
uh, do you, first of all, do you mind if we're showing your tacos? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be rude. Yeah, do you? Be <laughs> <laughs> well, do you get it while you can, yeah. right? <laughs> tell us, tell, we, we showed these yesterday, but these are your Asian tacos, right? Yeah, these are Korean tacos. Korean tacos. Go ahead. Yep. Good deal. Yeah, so uh, it's my smoked brisket, col <laughs> Colby marinade, uh, pickled onions, some uh, kimchi we make, top of some sesame seeds. So good, chef. And With that beer... I think that that's a good time right there. There's Let's a party waiting him. to be had. He's a big fan of these. He gets these every time you come, we come here. So. Is that right? Every single time. Do you come for the beer or the food or the beer and the food? Com yes. Good answer. Good you're, pairing. Right you're in there. politics. <laughs> or should be. No. no. <laughs> that's a horrible idea. <laughs> that's I'm the exact opposite. Ah, there okay, you go. okay. Uh, Put that mic up to him saying that. Say that again. Um, I live in the neighborhood. Uh, so when we first moved here, um, I actually filled out my first lease at that table over there to live in Midtown. No doubt. Um, this brewery is actually one of the selling points for it. Um, so I, I come here for the beer. I come here for the people that work here. Uh, the fact that they have amazing food trucks just happens to me uh, a major plus for me. Um, but this is this is my happy place away from home during COVID quarantine. This is pretty much the only other place that I go other than my basement. I love it. <laughs> I say it all the time. I literally do. A brewery, if it's going to stick, the neighborhood has to take it. But he came because of the brewery and then got into the neighborhood. It's kind of uh, backwards, but it works all together. Thanks, yeah. man. That's a great testimony. For my pleasure. Brews beers. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Chef, um, it's good to see you smiling faces with the yeah, yeah. food, too. Uh, you want to hear a quick story? Love to. Okay, give, give, give one more for him. What's oh, it? Jabot wants something, huh? We okay. need the um, story time with Jabot, too. All right, story time. I got one more. <laughs> this one is called If I Only Had a Brain, and that name is inspired by, um, we use rye straw in the mash, so the straw, uh, the straw portion of the, the grain is in the beer. We use in the beer on this case. So it's, What's it's, the name of the beer again? It's called If I Only Had a Brain. Oh, nice. So it's I a, say that it's every a, morning. It's a rye um, Brett Forward Saison or uh, farmhouse style beer. It's very effervescent, as you can see. It's got a lot of bubbles in it. Um, and then the other thing we do, this is 100% Colorado. We, I went and pulled the straw out of the field myself while they were harvesting the rye. And, uh, and then we use barley rootlets. The rootlets is the, the part of the barley that actually is waste product in the malting process. They malt the barley, they, uh, the root starts, the agrospar starts to shoot out the bottom and that would be the initial starting of the root system. But they halt that and kill the malt and that's what malt is, is sprouted barley that has been turned, that has stopped the growing process essentially. And so uh, those are usually waste products, but they're a high, high protein mm -hmm. um, ingredient. And so um, they let me come and grab some for free, essentially, because they're throwing them in the garbage or feeding them to the chickens or something. But it gives this beer an extremely thick mouthfeel. It's almost like fruit juice in your mouth, the way that, that it feels. It's so dank and earthy, too, man. Yeah, so it's a Brett beer as well, which gives it a lot of complex, earthy, um, fruity. There's a lot of like pineapple I get, and maybe cow. some mango. Now this one, guava in there, messes with your emotion yeah. <laughs> a little bit. It really does. I mean, yeah. I, I I bring this one in. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna set. Nope, I'm not settling on that because right. this taste is coming up. And yeah, and it, it yeah, it evolves on your tongue as you put it down. It's really nice. And that head is it sticks around for days. There's this high protein, and it it'll lace the glass and look beautiful all the way down. So this makes me Ooh. happy on so many levels. It's, yeah. Thicker than mama's oatmeal. This <laughs> yeah, that's the idea behind those ingredients is just a thick, thick, almost fruit for fruit juice tasting mouthfeel, like OJ in your mouth. This is a delicious beer. As you can see, we had a couple other stories. <laughs> you. Can't hear you in the microphone. No, oh, sorry. You used, yeah. used to have one of the cool microphones. <laughs> no, no problem. Give me the antique here. I mean, that that's what it is right here. And again, community, neighborhood. It's a beautiful day out. We showed you... Uh, brews beers, but we'd like to, before we take off, take a peek in the back. Sure thing. I've been I, doing some kegging and cleaning, so it might be a little wet back there. All right, there, Dave Olson, we're going to leave the beer. Yeah, we can take beer back there if you mm. want. Why not? 
Chef, back to work. I'm gonna take this one. Or can you come back? I can come back. Okay, come on back. All right, here it is. This is here it is. Yeah, we we've recently started putting more tanks in, so things are feeling a little crowded. It's uh, so interesting. Here, yeah, it starts with sort of our mixed culture. This is where that beer that I made, this one, the strawberry uh, grisette was made in these tanks. Um, so those are sort of sour tanks. They say sour. The Wait, hold on a sec. Before anybody can see any further than that, we're going to take a break. We're going to come right back. We'll be back. We're at Brews Beers. It's in Midtown. We've got our friend Dave Olson here with us. 67th and Pecos. 67th and Pecos, that's right. I usually just say, where's Brews Beers? Yeah, Siri. that works too. And Brews Beers <laughs> says, how do you spell that? B R U. Z brews brews beers. Yep, uh, it's the best of the best. It's a gem in Colorado. We'll be back on the Modern Eater Show. Hey, <laughs> what's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, four by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness. Uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming, uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey 4-pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pecos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. You're watching The Modern Eater, and now back to the show. Okay, when you're at Brews Beer, so there's one thing that you see, and it's the tap system out front. And Jeff Rourke from A-Plus Beverage Solutions, he was the man who installed it. That's why their beer flows so well. I don't know if that's uh, the case right now, but Jeff Rourke, he was the guy who put it in, and he's the guy that you should get a hold of if you need a custom install or maintenance done. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, 720-272-3809. Back to brews beers. Brews beers. You guys, uh, Dave Olson. Yeah. Brewer extraordinaire. That's right. Chef extraordinaire. Chef Jeff Jabot. He's here. He's one of our favorites. One of Always the favorites. Here. Well, you have to, he's here with us. You got to say our favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our favorite. <laughs> our actual favorite. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here every week. My That's right. You are here every week. <laughs> My friend and yours. Okay, this is a treat because we're going back here. First time I ever came into this location with brews beers. There was just a couple of tanks back yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's changed quite a bit, Show even since changed. I started a year and a half ago. This so, is cool. Yeah, this, these used to be in the brewery. Now they have to sit here just outside the brewery, but we, we make things work. So, yeah. But the kind of one of the ideas of Ryan Evans and Charlie Gotten, Kenny, was they built this place out yeah. for growth Absolutely. and expansion. So it's yeah. not like they're just trying to tuck and, and this no. was built to fit like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. We... We were, so we started as a four barrel brewery, which is a very tiny brewery. And this space mm -hmm. is huge for a four barrel brewery. But <laughs> we were four barrel brewing into a 30 barrel tank, which is like a seven, eight turns to get into that tank. We were four barrel brewing into a 15 barrel tank back in those days. I don't even know that they, they had this 10 barrel, but I'm not sure they had a four barrel <laughs> fermenter back in those days. So yeah, so, but since then it's, expanded quite a bit we've got two 15s which are the ones that are straight back here there are three 30 barrels now which when i started we only have one and now we have three so uh the one in the corner there is the newest one um the one in the middle is the oldest and then this this one right here as well you know then, what i like when i see that is someone's drinking the beer 
Someone's drinking And beer. that's fantastic. With two locations, and this feeds your Colfax location as that's well. Right. And then with the canning and the bottling and the special releases yep. and everything included. That is so cool just to see the growth. About five yeah. years, right? We've grown the Modern Eater yep. with Brews Beers, but about five year anniversary coming right up. Coming right up. We're going to do a double since we didn't do, really do a COVID Are you really? We're going to do a double. We might do two weekends in a row. It's still in talks with how that's going to all play out, but. I don't want to ask about, about Belgium Brew Fest, week. but. Yeah, that's another one that's still uh, coming up in the air. We don't know hope. Just when cross and your if. Yeah. It'll be back at some point. But oh, it's not going. Yeah, good. it's coming back. When we can, sure. it will yeah. live on. So All right, lay us on what's sure. over here, and then maybe we can go poke a nail in something. Yeah, so this is the brew house. This is somewhat new. It's uh, been here since I got here, but it's a full 15-barrel brew house. Functionally, it's a 20-barrel brew house. I can boil 23 barrels on the, um, on the kettle, and really I could do – normal ABVs on that mash ton as well. So um, we've recently installed all the grain handling equipment, the big uh, hopper that's up you above. You guys is are a little ballers. Bit new. That yeah. is cool. We did all that ourselves. And then the uh, there's we have grain handling that brings it up into the hopper uh, automatically. So all that's pretty new Look at within that. the last three months. I think I've run five beers through that hopper. At Tell this me, point, Tris, so. do you know how to run all this? I know how to run yeah, all this. All this is what I do. <laughs> and I'm around all this, and I go, I don't know anything in the world. I mean, I better know how to run that. I freaking put it together. So. <laughs> <laughs> I built it. And it's like, no, I mean, I'm not questioning you. It just makes me think, like, what do I know about anything in life? You know? I, know I, to, I will say I didn't know anything about it when I, before I started building it, yeah. and then I just started building it. Lots so. of YouTube videos. Lots of YouTube videos. <laughs> That's right. Your yeah. inspiration. Where do you get your inspiration from? And just uh, oh. uh, he probably learned a lot about beer from Charlie. I do learn about beer, a lot about beer from Charlie, but I've been in this industry for um, uh, almost eight years now, and okay. I've been brewing as a home brewer for well over 10. So, um, But yeah, I mean, Belgium is, there's so much going on in, in the Belgian beer world that it's easy to f draw inspiration. But I find that I draw a lot of inspiration from food as well, from culinary, from people like Jeff, and you know, we've talked a lot about ingredients, mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about spicing and things like that, yep. I know in the past, and he's really liked some of the beers that I've made here as well as other places, and encourages me in ways to push it this way and push it that way, and, and you know, I, it's a lot about culinary, but I love weird and historic and ancient, and so I really like that straw beer with, with barley rootlets is kind of a very ancient, there's not really a style around something like that because it's very old techniques and very old ingredients where they were like, we have these ingredients, why waste them? Let's put them in something that we can get the nutrition out of them or get the, the, the calories out of them so that we can keep going on the fields or in the mine or wherever it is we're trying to do. Or in the case of fruit, like how do we preserve this fruit? We have so much of it, but it's, not, it's all gonna start rotting in the next two weeks. What can we do? With how that? do we preserve it? Yeah. Throw it into a beer and you can preserve that nutrition. Mm -hmm. You can get the sugar out of it in a good way. So you're not consuming a lot of sugar, but you can keep all the micronutrients and the carbohydrates that are good, that keep you keep your energy going to keep working the field, keep going in the mines or just survive throughout the winter, you know, whatever it is you need to do. So I draw a lot of inspiration from very, very old, yeah. old world techniques. One, I mean, one of the reasons why they started really frying and breading chicken yeah. Was to bring that extra element with the protein and then the, yeah. the carbs and do that. But I love that type of stuff of just fermentation as a whole just keeps things alive for longer. Yes, yes, yes. And makes them digestible. With, you know? and, and so you, you go down this thought process, in which I think if you haven't fallen in love yet, I think you are right mm -hmm. now with Dave Olson because that's those are the ins inspirational types yeah. of things of keeping it going. And when you go back to the home brewing, I'll guarantee you there is a big influence if you're a big home brewer. Yeah. He read Charlie Papazian's book because oh, that's yeah. usually the Bible to... <laughs> Who didn't read Charlie Papazian's it's, book? <laughs> it's usually the Bible to most people. I'm pretty sure it was the first and then probably the seventh or eighth yeah. book I ever read. The same book twice. When we know. sat down with Charlie Papazian at the Great American Beer Festival and had the opportunity to interview his honor. I mean, what a great influence in, in just transcending through beer altogether. But it goes out. So I don't want to get too deep in the weeds because I do want to go see those yeah. things. But as far as influence does go, so you've been in different style breweries. This is a really interesting style and setup yeah, for you that true. may be a little unique to what you've done in it's the past. It's very true. Yeah, I mean... Do you feel constricted in that? In I, this way? I, I do and I don't. Okay. So 
I, the box is is so interesting to work in, mm -hmm. and it allows for so many different things that it, it is very inspiring to try to be like, okay, how do I make this work? And also use a lot of hops, which isn't a very Belgian yes. thing, you know? Like, how do I make something that is modern in that it's using all these new tropical variety hops? And this strawberry beer, I use Nelson in one of the versions of it, which is a very modern hop. It's a very hypey hop, but it's so different when you use it in a mixed culture beer versus when you use it in like a hazy IPA or when you use it in a West Coast style IPA or something like that. So it is constraining, but that box makes things a little bit more interesting. I don't have to. When you them. win in that box, when yeah. you win, that that means something very special. Yeah, because, it's true. You know, exactly right. it, it, so it, it's an interesting thought process. But that's why I mean, really, come down, try the brews, the yeah. beer, brews beers. It's fantastic. You got where's your nail? Where's your nail? Uh, yeah, it's a, we're gonna have to go all it, the way around. Is the nail over there? <laughs> yeah. Is the I hammer can, yeah, there? Yeah, I can grab some stuff. All right. So just as we walk over there, set up and yeah. and what barrel a aging means to any totally. brewery and that uh, that type yeah. of thing. So for sure. So I'm gonna grab a, a pliers while we're here, but. Barrel aging is as old as brewing itself. I mean, oak has been involved in the brew beer making process for as old as beer is, because it was really the only vessels we had originally. Um, now we're using them in a much different way. We're using them to extract maybe some spirit character or some wine character that the beer wants. You know, a lot of these, a lot of brewers, they would try to strip all the flavor out of the beer mm -hmm. and then start using it. Or the lager brewers would line it with pitch, which is like a sap thing to actually put a barrier between the wood and the beer so that none of that flavor was passing, passing through. But modern brewers are trying to pull that whiskey flavor out, trying to pull that tequila, that whatever it is that was in there, the wine character. So, so your base beer though, your base, it, it, and so is that something that you want to enhance or do you utilize that barrel to be, to, to add to that very basic base or do you take a complex beer and say, I'm going to put it on steroids? So th there's, lot, there's all different ways of, of okay. playing with barrels. We're, gra <laughs> we're, we're going to go over here to the barrels. Yeah. We'll break off right now so that we can take a break. We'll come we right should. back. We're going to go over to the barrels. We're going to grab a couple of glasses so that we can sample. This is, this is what you call the treat. When the brewer has the pliers, and we're going over to the barrels. He's going to put a nail into the barrel, and then we're going to sample it, and it's going to be delicious. This is the treat when the brewer takes you over there. So we'll do that. We'll break away at Brews Beer. Chef Jeff Chabot, Dave Olson, the brewer. There's Kristen running around doing great work, as always. Come to Brews Beers. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado. Your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey, Modern Eater fans. I'm Don Trobo with the Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. 
That's why I support the modern eater. Now, back to the show. Okay, back to Brews Beers Midtown. This is the brewery that the neighborhood loves, and I don't blame it, but um, destination place, too. Come from all over town. Dog-friendly is really the way to go. It's, it's, it's nice to be out here. <laughs> I see these lovely barrels. Yeah, this is our barrel wall. So uh, we do uh, some barrel aging, soon to be a lot more, but uh, COVID kind of slowed things down. But we still got plenty of interesting stuff going right now. So when you barrel age, you put this on tap, or is this a bottle release? How do you usually um, put uh, your barrel Usually age? we do a little bit of both. So we have a barrel aged uh, Ode Brewing on in bottles right now. It's no longer on draft, but it was, but it's still available in bottles. And um, so usually we do a little bit of both. It can be a little. Uh, it's not a large volume compared to those tanks in the back, obviously. So sometimes they're a little exclusive. But now, now Dave said to us, "No big deal." Let, I mean. I said, are you sure? Because I don't want to inconvenience. He's like, no big deal. Just going to pull it out. So which barrel are you hunting for? Um, so these nails are all on the side here. So I just got to pull them out in order to get the nails that are on the side. Okay. So I think I'm going to go for one of those two and then one of these two. So. All right. This is going to be great. Now this is always the treat. So when, when it's not quite ready yet and you, and you can't get in the bunghole, right? Uh, you don't want to open the bunghole. With beer. Yeah, yeah, you now, don't if, this, do if this was whiskey yeah, you could or open bourbon, it up. you could open up the bunghole and get in there yeah. and, s and sniff it, but it's not. We're so you got to go with the nail. Yeah. Now, why the nail? We're far more worried about oxygen ingress on a uh, beer. They're much more sensitive to it, and it can ruin a beer very quickly. Now, a barrel obviously will always have a little bit of oxygen, but the idea is small amounts of oxygen over time. If I open that bung, you're pushing a whole bunch of oxygen in there all at once. So, the, and then when the nail comes out, we're gonna get some beer, we're gonna pour get it, some beer. and it's gotta be a quick, smooth process. Are you skilled at this? You're gonna, you're gonna see it happen right now. All right, watch this. First this we so much fun. make sure it's very sanitary, and then I'm gonna hand you these two glasses. I can do it, I think. I'm gonna pull that first one, and then as I hand, it's gonna come. you can pull the next one. So. Oh, I'm just handing you the glass. Oh, this one's dribbling. Now, you want her to I squirt. That was, you left the last nail in. <laughs> I'm going to do, yeah, this one's just got a little bit of, push that in. Now, was that the last time you went in on it? That was No, sometimes the hole will just sort of fill in with yeast, and so it doesn't want to squirt out very nicely. Yeah, this one's going to be a pain. Let's try the other one. Let's try the other one. So. The nail, this isn't a new nail because they've done this before. Yeah, well, these, these have been in here for over a year or two, so there we go. There we go. That's perfect. Well, there it goes, too. Now, does that mean that it's not full all the way to the top here? No. This? No, that means it's, it just, it likes to ooze. There you As go. the weather changes. That's perfect and the, amount of pour, the right? temperature, the temperature changes and the humidity changes the liquid inside these barrels swell. It's called seasoning, and it'll actually go into the oak and then come back out again as that humidity and temperature changes. And you're waiting for, you know, some people want to go two seasons, some people want to go one season. Um, and so you're waiting for that in and out, that breathing of the barrel to affect change on the... What was this barrel used for? So I'm going to have to drink this one to, to make sure that it is the one I think it is, but... This is a quad, I believe. Oh, I can smell it right now. A wine barrel aged quad. This is our Jagged Mountain quad. So with wine barrels, how many uses are, can, they, can you use out of a wine? So it depends on what you're going for, obviously. We can use them as many times as we want, but the, the wine flavor that's in there starts to slowly change and degrade. So okay. you'll no longer extract wine from the barrel. But there's a lot of other things that are going it's, on there. It smells like a port wine. It's a port. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it actually a port tawny barrel. On the side there. Yeah, it's a tawny port barrel. So, yeah, this is port barrel aged quad. Off the hook. Wow. Yeah, this is pretty insane. I haven't drank this one for you a good it? couple months, so. I can't even tell you. That's wild. And, and it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's, pretty it's not really complex complex to where it's just flavorful and it's rich and it's it's not over the top but it, it's like a delicious port yeah you get all that impression of sweetness that taunt that like a port will have but it's but n it's it's much less sweet than that port would be so yeah this is a real i want chocolate thing. now complex. are you into yeah, the chocolate yeah. yeah 
Maybe a little cigar to dip down oh. in there and pull off of every once in a while. I'm not going to get any work done today. Well, yeah, sure. you are. <laughs> You're going to be work whistling <laughs> while you work because this is a treat. This is, a treat. This so is amazing. Fun work. Something like this. When do you, when do you know it's ready, Dave? Um, I'm thinking this one's ready. So yeah. You're, um, you're really very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by this. So it has been in a while. Um, this one was actually put into this barrel before I started here. But I've been sipping it and drinking it, and um, I've been waiting for it to really speak to me. And it's getting really, really close, if not already there. So this is an award we'll start working winner. on getting this one into some bottles soon. The, co the color yep. is beautiful, too. Yeah, and it's really bright. Usually that means when you see that there's nothing sort of – Beer, young beer is hazy. It has a lot of yeast in solution. When it starts getting bright like this, then you start to know that the yeast is kind of done doing its job, and um, mm -hmm. you got a lot. It's starting to prepare itself to get ready. It's to get warm. Do you, have, do you have a name for this yet? Uh, I, we don't know. Yeah, it doesn't get named until we package it. It gets some CO2 and you sit in it, around, and we and sit around and we yeah. drink it and we decide on a name. Gosh, so, I mean, I don't even. It's know. badass. I don't. I'm just gonna call it badass. I think you right need now. to add CO2 to this. You just drink it like. Yeah, that. we we do those kinds of beers as well here, and some some of them speak to us, and we don't touch them, and we package them as is. And some of them we don't. We'll try it with CO2 before we make that final decision. But what do you think? Yeah. You got another little. Uh, yeah, we could pull another one. You? Yeah, let me pull. So um, this is obviously a clean quad beer that we uh, did. But in these two barrels, so you got we have some sour beers in these other two barrels. Would you, Jeff, would you mind asking Kristen for three more glasses? So I see you have a couple mythology barrels. Yeah, so we got some you, mythology back here. Do you just kind of hook up with Noah from Rocky Mountain Barrel Company, or who? Uh, yeah, we do get some from Rocky Mountain Barrel Company. You see, these are Stranahan barrels, uh -huh. and these came directly from Stranahan's. We have uh, some relationship with some guys over there. They bring us some barrels. We give them some beer, and it um, works out pretty good. Um, these are Tawny Port, though, so I'm pretty sure we source these through a broker. Um, again, before I – yeah, this is a really beautiful beer. That's a good one. So, um, All right, Jay, do you want to get in there with Dave? Hey, you guys. Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater. And uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators, you know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever, and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120, there's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. I go home, I strip down to my skivvies. All right, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Hey everybody, Steve Gould from Golden Moon Distillery and Golden Moon Speakeasy. When I get my cocktails to go from Golden Moon Speakeasy, I go home, I kick back, and I watch The Modern Eater. <laughs> skivvies. Hey, I'm a Marine. It's skivvies, man.
All right, you guys, back to the show in just a second. Chef Noah Siebenhaller, and we're here to tell you about bread and specifically Aspen Baking. Aspen Baking Company has been baking the best bread in Colorado since 1994. Chef, I know you use Aspen Baking Company here. What do you use here? Why do you like it? So um, I use their sourdough, their French Parisian, their burger rolls, marble rye, and slider rolls. Um, I, I was introduced about three and a half years ago, and I haven't found a better bread in Colorado since. So we use it for exclusively for everything. I'm telling you what, you guys, don't take my word for it. Take Chef Noah's. They're making quality product. They don't put in the, 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 the fake colors. They don't put in the chemicals. They don't freeze it. They don't do that stuff. They just bake fresh bread. Aspenbaking.com is where you go to get that bread. And uh, now, back to the show. So we'll pull this one. This is another. Hey, Dave, uh, she gave me four. That's, That's cool. <laughs> yeah. She wants think, one. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> Yeah, don't leave me out. That was, that was subtle. So this one is going to be a sour beer, mixed culture beer. This is actually that same. Man, these ones are kind of being a little pain with the holes. Anyway. So, um... These are, again, these are mixed culture beers. So this one's gonna be a sour beer. And this is where the, the Belgians have been creating lambic and goose in um, wine barrels for centuries, making um, mixed culture beer, uh, sour beer, spontaneously fermented beer um, for a very long time. Is this a young this one beer. right here? So this is a little bit young. So wh what this is, is this is that same beer that we're releasing but I put a little, that we're releasing on Thursday, the grisette, mm. but I put a little bit into these uh, barrel, this barrel, and, um, oh man. So, cause this is a, a little more traditional that it would have seen oak um, on its, before it gets served. So I put a little bit of this one into a barrel that we had emptied, and um, I really wanted to try this beer on oak. So you're trying the first one right now, the first sip of it since it's gone through oak right now. I haven't sipped this beer yet. It only went in um, in August of last year is when I put this into the barrel. August of last year? Yep, August 2020. Mm, you but it, the beer itself is older. I brewed the beer in November of 2019. Sweetheart, you don't look any older than September. <laughs> <laughs> She's beautiful for <laughs> she sure. She is beautiful. <laughs> She's a beaut. And really, I mean, you, you put these beers together, and it's uh, sometimes it's you've done it before, but it's a crapshoot. Like, it is. As yeah. you getting into these barrels, you're going, what do we have? What, what are we coming up with? And yeah. I mean, this is not something you're barreling for mass distribution or no. consistency. No, we don't make any of those we, mass distribution no. barrel beers. No, it's, it's always a, it's a, it's a project of passion. It's, um, I love oak. I love sending beers through oak. I like spending time. I like for a beer to spend time in there. I don't want to see it for Ooh. minimum 10 months, most likely more like 18 months. Is I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to experience the beer for a good eight to 10. So I won't even pull that nail for a while. But it's, you know, there's just something about sending beer through oak. It's history. It's tradition it's new it's unique it changes everything it's no longer just about what i'm doing it's about what especially when you get into these spontaneous mixed culture beers it's about what the world is <laughs> offering to you and you go okay well, how can i play with this how can i make this into something unique and interesting so distiller friends of mine would say beer is <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get you for this one. Beer is what would grow up. What does Dustin say? He says, uh, beer is what they want to, before they grow up to be spirits. Yeah. Uh, but I've, I've, heard the, I've heard the comment, it takes a hell of a lot of beer to make, a, to make a, a bottle of wine, or it takes a hell of a lot of beer to make a bottle of whiskey. I think beer, and I, I don't want to say underrated, be, but beer, and especially when you do, do you think this is more for the consumer or the brewer? Is this your passion, or do you think the consumer really enjoys this? So I think there is a, a consumer that loves, that loves, loves, loves this. And that's all they really want to buy, and that's all they really want to drink is beer that has seen oak. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those consumers. I mean, I, I love me some lager and Belgian beer every once in a while, but I want to, the only thing I spend my money on is beer that saw oak. I'm a brewer, so I get a lot of free beer, but I spend money, lots of money, $40 a bottle money, 
on beer that saw oak, that went through oak. So it, it is for everyone. I think the brewers love it the most. I think they, they love playing. It's, it's, they don't know what's going to happen. It's uh -huh. outside of their control, which is very uncomfortable and unique for a brewer. They know what it's going to be before they start making it. They know where they want it to go. And if they hit it, they did their job right. But this, what it does is outside of our control. The way it comes out yeah. is outside of our control. And I think that we love that and it scares the crap out of us, uh -huh. but that's part of the love. But you see the labor intensive and the time yeah. process and, and really the, the types of uh, wine gets paid, right? <laughs> when you do great things to wine, you get paid for it. When you do great things to spirits, you get paid for it. Does the price, what the consumer get, reflect the time and love and effort? It does, not as much as a wine and a spirit does, but yeah. it does. We, we I do mean, you don't elevate this price to where, okay, would you like a bottle of this? It's going to be $150. No, no, yeah, no, we can't pull that, and there's no way. There are and why? very few brewers, few brewers who could pull that kind of price point. I don't know why, because... It just is so... Because beer has always been the peasant drink, and no one wants to see a $75 bottle of beer. Nobody... Because they're like, no, 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 that's not beer. Beer is... You know, thirty dollars a case. Yeah. That's not beer. Isn't so it's 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 a little bit of like a. Do you feel me on that dichotomy? I though? hear you. Yeah. I hear. I, I, that's exactly how I feel. We should be able to command. Like, there's no less work. Yeah. When it comes to we're fermenting a product and then it sits in oak for a long period yeah. of time and then you receive that product after it's been packaged. What we just had over there in that wine barrel. Yeah. Man, that yeah. could stand up to anything that you put on a table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as artisan goes, food. Yeah. Like, that beer would be so good with food. Good with dessert, like such a good... And it's yeah. not getting paid. I always like to finish where we began. So let's put on our masks and we'll head out front. Yep. And we'll, f and we'll uh, finish this baby up. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Dave Do Wilson it. here with us. Chef Jeff Jabot, we've had a lot of delicious food and beers today. And I'll tell you what, just talking about that type of uh, esoteric kind of in the weeds of like just the business of what it is but they i just think that it's worth more money that is yeah. artisan stuff it's it's tough up for a beer to command the, the pricing of wine and spirits it's really tough but we do our darndest i got a lot of beer in my hands here dave's Where beer's always been so food friendly too he's a great cook great food producer. friendly yeah yeah i mean i i really like that's how i consume beer i'm not yeah. really a start at 10 p.m. and go till four in the morning kind of a drinker i am a i am a i'm an eater and i'm a drinker and i like to to, to pair things together please don't slip on that beer together, sir so. please don't slip on that beer sir <laughs> for sure please okay. don't slip on that beer. <laughs> i know okay we'll be right back we'll clean that up in just a half a second but as we walk the through bruise beers right here in midtown again dog friendly usually you see dogs all throughout here where are the dogs today jay where are the dogs? What a lovely day. And again, brews beers in Midtown. I think Dave's inside and he's probably concerned about cleaning that up. But I'll tell you what, as we end this here and um, Jay Parker, right, myself, guys. Greg Hollenbeck, we're here in front of Brews Beers. This is 67th and Pecos. They always have a delicious food truck here. I would look on their social media. You got the Facebook, the Facebook. You got the Facebook. Yeah, my Facebook is uh, Hesher Barbecue Company. And then you got the Instagram. Instagram is at Barbecue Beyond Driven. And Brews Beers, you just look B R U Z Beers. You need to go BrewsBeers.com. I'd sign up for their newsletter. Uh, you'll get all kinds of great offerings and, again, events and that type of thing. So things start to open up again. You'll see this. There's their garden back there. This is a community center. This is their front patio, side patio. This is Midtown right here. Do you know it's called Midtown? Yeah. Yeah, Midtown. 67th and Pecos. Chef Jeff Jabot, Jay Parker, Dave Olson. Got to say hi to Ryan Evans and Charlie Gottenkinney. I don't know. I think it's time to have that uh, pig's uh, pig face pig face sandwich. It's a good sandwich. Okay, we're gonna yep. do that. Thanks. Let's let's wave. There he is. Gosh, there he is. Here he is. I was doing what they call vamping. I was telling oh, everybody. Sorry. No, you're fine. Absolutely. I'm mopping up. And I just want to say this is what it's all about: patios, people drinking beers, beautiful telling days. stories, beautiful days. <laughs> right. It'll be ramping back up. Brewsbeers.com. B r u z b e e r s dot com. And That's uh, right. keep an eye on it. Come check us out. This Thursday, we got a brand new beer releasing. 
It'll be here as well as Kofax location, so. We tried it, that's the strawberry? That's the strawberry. We got a raspberry and a dry hop version coming too. Yum. Boom. Yum. Thank you. All right, down the road, here's Bruce Beers. Come Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.